Wiggler. I know what you're thinking. Does anyone still use these? Yes, some people still use them. They're really good for if you need to indicate something from a distance where you're a couple feet away on large pieces of equipment. Also, today's video I'm going to cover some of the attachments, how to properly use a wiggler. I'm also going to cover the attachment end ball to ball, which finds the center and also the center of a hole and also the center of a block. The indicator mount, which holds an indicator the disc which finds the edge or center of a workpiece and the most useful is the point which helps you pick up scribed lines it'll also pick up scribed lines on an angle let's get started right now what we have is two different styles of wigglers this guy here is a new modern set and this guy here is an old set this is a stare so it's actually a really good quality one the difference between these two is to load this wiggler, we're going to load the indicator one first. All you do is just push the ball in and it clicks into place. This guy here has two features, which is kind of nice, is you can store one inside and then you put the ball or the piece through here. Oops. This guy goes through here like this. Then you just screw this guy in here. And they're both basically the same. Tighten that up a bit. But this guy's a quick changer. And they both take onto your indicator. So let's go through the different types of ball contacts. So this guy here is a ball to ball. Okay. So what you can do with this guy is you can find an edge. And you can also find the center of a hole. This guy here is a disc. It's used to find edges. Your point is probably the most universal because if you have uh, crosshair lines scribed out, you can find the crosshair lines on a flat plane, but you can also find them on an angled plane as well. We can also use, because this is a smaller diameter shank, it's 3 8 I can also do this, so I don't have to put in, I don't have to put in a chuck to use this, and then I can just block my part up. As I'm going to find the edge of this workpiece, I'm using a quarter inch ball, so it's a ball to ball. I'm also going to spin this about a thousand RPM. And also, I'm going to find my zero, zero out. Then, I'm going to go further and watch what happens to the ball after that. Then, I'm going to use my pencil to bring it back into play and then reset the zero again. So, this is how my wiggler starts off. I'm going to move in. It's going to start touching soon. almost there I'm basically there right now I would zero out my digital readout then move it in one eighth of an inch or 125 thou which is half of my 250 now watch what happens when I go over so what I would do then is use my pencil to bring it back out don't use your finger use another object and then bring it back up Back in, and we're at zero again. disc. So this is just a pop-in style, where I pop it in, tighten it up. The amount of tightness that you have on here will depend on the amount of freedom you want this wiggler to have. You just want to be about medium tight. You still want it to have some looseness in there, or some ability to move. I'm turning this on to a thousand again. My wiggler, if you can see, it's out. I'm going to move in and it'll start to touch. Now this disc is a hundred thou. So when I get to zero here, which is right there, what I do now is I would lift this up, move over 50 thou and re-zero my indicator. 
Okay, now I've saved the best. This is the point. I'm gonna put it in. Tighten it up a small amount. This guy, I don't actually do anything with it except for use it to point. So I'll put it off a small amount, turn it on to 1,000 RPM. Then I'll bring my pencil in so it stops moving. Then I will use it to locate my X mark here. Now I'm going to turn it off because it's in center. Move my X and Y in. Bring my Z down. Then move it around again. And voila, I'm on center. This part of the wiggler is the point. And the best part of the point is I can pick an angle or pick a spot up on an angle. So I'm going to turn this on at 1000 RPM. I'm going to zero. my piece out. I can leave it on so I can see that it moves when I bump in. You want to get as close as you can without hitting. And you want to bring your Z down as close as you can. Oh, hang on, I'm out. It happens. Zero that guy out again. Bring it down again. Right about there. Right about there. That looks about right. That's a center on the center mine. For the ball is when I want to find the center of a hole. So I'm going to put my ball in. I'm going to turn it to a thousand RPM. I'm going to zero it out. Gonna to move to the position of my hole. Bring this down. I can see I'm out quite a bit. I'm out quite a bit. Bring it over. Come down. Now at this point in time, I'd stop. Line the hole up as best I can. Bring it down. Move over. Bring it down. Now when I bring it down, if I lift it up, see I brought it down, when I lift it up, when I turn it on, if it starts wiggling out, then I'm gonna, then I know that I'm not in the correct center position. See how it moved? I'm not in the correct center position. So I'm gonna zero it again. Move over a little bit where I think I'm out. Stop it. Bring it down till I'm touching. Lift up, turn it back on. Still out a small amount, zero. Stop it, bring it down till I touch. Move over a small amount, lift up, turn it on. I'm in perfect center. To get more machining knowledge, check out my YouTube channel, Shop and Math. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. All you have to do is click on the icon on my face and I'll take care of the rest. Have an excellent night.